we're live here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. Joshua, you want to kick us off? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Joshua Steely. I'm the marketing director of bourbon here at Buffalo Trace Distillery. And I'm here today with our master blender, Mr. Drew Mayville. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Eagle Rare. Drew, how you doing? I'm excited to be here on Whiskey Wednesday. Great. Uh, before we jump into this, Drew, tell us a little bit about the role of Master Blender and what you and your team do here on a day-in, day-out basis at the distillery. Sure. Um, even though I'm excited to be here on Whiskey Wednesday, I wish every day was Whiskey uh, Day. So mm -hmm. it can be if you want. But anyways, mm -hmm. my role here happens to be, I think, pretty important, but I'm one of many team members that make uh, these products. But specifically about... Uh, is barrels and barrel selection so it's the placement of the barrels in the warehouse and then the selection of the barrels that is really important because these products are aged quite a long time you have to carefully plan that ahead of time and then when it comes to actually removing them from the barrels it's the selection then and the tasting through our taste panel where we actually uh, taste the different whiskeys and select the ones for these products so my role of master blender is is that and selection of all these uh, barrels and uh, appraisal of these barrels to put in these products. Hmm. Great. Um, well, before we get to tasting, let's talk a little bit about Eagle Rare, the brand. You know, we love the, the brand here and for a couple of reasons. One, we think the brand really embodies the best of the American dream, this idea of, of liberty, of hope, um, and the fact that anything is possible with hard work, persistence, and patience. Yeah. And then from a whiskey standpoint, it's such a mature bourbon. Um, it's an age state of bourbon that starts at 10 years old and goes up from there. And you know, that extra age brings so much to the whiskey itself. And as we go through the tasting today, we'll talk more about that. Uh, so Drew, wh what, from your standpoint, what sets Eagle Rare apart? I think it's a lot of different things. First of all, like you say, it's the rarest of the rarest. And as you get up through this range that we're gonna taste today, you get up to 20 years, which is extremely rare. So that's really important. That differentiates it from many other bourbons. Also, I think it's important to, uh, to understand as it becomes rarer and more mature, the flavors are more integrated and the complexity increases as we move through this uh, range that we're gonna taste today. So that richness, that depth mm -hmm. is really uh, persistent on all three of these and it accelerates as you go up to the 20 year old. And of course the palatability is, is really important because these whiskeys, once you taste, you can never go back. Mm. So the palatability is fantastic. Drinking it si straight on the rocks, etc. So it's, it's actually all those things that makes it and sets it apart. And I guess maybe one important thing also to include is it's one of the most, this one here is the Eagle Rare, is one of the most award-winning bourbons in the world. So mm. you put all that together and I think that sets it apart uh, this this brand and these uh, uh, expressions. Absolutely. Well, um, what do you say we do a little tasting? Sure. Where do you want to start? Well, let's let's back up just a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like to explain that this is a range of products. These are all the same bourbons. So majority of corn. The second grain is rye, and the third grain is malted barley. So you have basically the same recipe because as we go through, when you taste these, you're really tasting the recipe and how it's made. You're gonna taste that sweetness from the corn, the spiciness from the rye, and of course, uh, because it's aged so long, you're gonna taste that oak or that maturation and you're gonna get, it's really some of the uh, intricacies of that complexity of the maturation process. Mm. So we always like to start with uh, Eagle Rare 10 first and actually the Eagle Rare is something, I actually been in the industry over 40 years and I started with a company called Seagram and they were actually the original uh, owner of this brand and eventually Sazerac took it over in the late 80s. So I've been with this brand quite a few years now, mm. so it's over 40 years. And so it brings back uh, this brand back to me where I used mm. to handle it before. So it's exciting to me to talk about this today uh, but Eagle Rare 10 year old is a fantastic whiskey and very few bourbons are aged over 10 years. So this is the entry level of this brand and in, in, in this range. Um, so again, we're gonna taste the recipe. So when we taste, uh, when we taste with our taste panel and in the lab, 
we actually nose first, and then we describe what we uh, nose, mm -hmm. and then we taste, and then we uh, taste the palate along the palate, and then we actually uh, look for the lingering effects. So we're going to look at those in sequence. It's like a story. Uh, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So when we taste, it's got the beginning, then the middle, and then the end, and we're gonna go through it, the tasting like that, if that's all right. Sounds great. So when we nose, we like to nose gently, instead of sticking our nose in and taking a deep breath, because you wanna get all those top notes, the intricacy of the bourbon itself. So for instance, when you, when you nose this one, you're gonna get notes of uh, maybe orange, uh, toffee, uh, kind of a cocoa, like more of a milk chocolatey note. Mm. Then you get some, maybe some dark fruit. Yeah, I get dark cherries. Yep, lots of people get that. Um, because everybody tastes differently, they perceive flavors differently. And that's why it's not, oh, you should see this, you right, should right. see that. And so, after we nose, we taste, but the first taste, you really just rinse the palate, so to speak. So when you do that, just rinse the palate because we're gonna taste after that again. You're gonna, you're gonna really acclimatize your palate. Mm. Well, that was pretty good. And that was only the first taste. Mm. So when you taste it, I mm. want you to taste the transition across the palate. It's very important because I look at that balance because this is actually balanced very nicely. Mm -hmm. So let's taste it again. So you get that, that fruitiness up front. It transitions across the palate to that dry, oaky flavor in the back of the palate. And then you get, um, this, it's kind of oily, the mouthfeel, because you, you talk about the taste, but you also have to look at the texture of it. So when it's oily, you get those raisin notes, you get the chocolate notes, you get that dried fruit notes. And then at the end, as it transitions to the finish, you get that spiciness that comes through from the rye. And that's what I was saying about tasting the recipe, you're actually tasting those spicy notes from the rye, which it really adds those notes. And then as it lingers, you get that oakiness in the back, mid to back palate. And then it just continues on and lingers. Mm. So that's why I like to call it a well-balanced bourbon. It's a little more dominant on the heavy oak flavor towards the finish, but it's very well-balanced because you can pick out the different components. And as maybe even before I should have started, I should have said that as we go through the lineup, the maturity increases. And what happens is the complexity and the richness uh, and the integration of the flavors actually increase. So this is a pretty good starting point, especially since this has won five double gold medals um, in, in competition. So it's a very highly rated bourbon to start. And we're only gonna get better. Yeah, and in fact, it just won uh, Best American Whiskey and Best Bourbon at International Whiskey Competition. And so um, I, I agree 100%. You know, it's something that's, this is a 90 proof bourbon. So not, not overproofed, um, and, and the, the long finish is really impressive on something yes. that's not too high of a proof. So um, it's, it's an, a luxurious bourbon. Luxurious is a great way to say it. And, and one thing I love about Eagle Rare at this tenure, it's really a time capsule. You know, a decade has passed since this whiskey went into the barrel between when it went into the barrel to the time it goes into the bottle. And everything in that bottle is at least 10 years old. And it just, it's just this reminder of, of um, you know, how, how much the world has changed in over a decade. It's really a time capsule in a bottle, and so that's something I love about the, uh, these older bourbons. It's kind of uh, something I think about is that I've been here 16 years, so 1.6 times this. So <laughs> another four years, it'll be two, two rotations I've been through of 10 years. So it just takes that long. And I'm... I'm still a little bit young, but I'm old because uh, of this, you know. <laughs> it's been 10 years plus another six, so. Mm. We, Great. We do have some questions about, sure. um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of questions about mash bill. You, you went over, you know, the, the ingredients and, and the, and the sure. breakdown, um, but people are talking about the Buffalo Trace as well. And what is different between the Buffalo Trace product here, Buffalo Trace Distillery, and Eagle Rare? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
We get asked that quite a bit. And it's very simple is that Buffalo Trace is the same recipe as these, but the difference is the age. And we target Buffalo Trace around eight years. So that extra two years in the barrel is just like we're gonna see as it improves and it changes in complexity. So when you taste the two products, it's like night and day. So you see the Buffalo Trace will be even more balanced than this because it isn't aged those extra two years, you're gonna taste more of the upfront fruitiness and less of that oakiness towards the finish. So some people like that balance more than say Eagle Rare, but lots of people like this balance better. So this one's more of towards the mature. And also, like I said from the beginning, you get more complexity as you age up. So it actually integrates the flavors, like I said. So an example is you might taste a little brown sugar note on this, and as you go up, you get more towards maybe molasses, that syrupy. So it actually changes that flavor. It makes it more interesting and more complex. Mm -hmm. So Buffalo Trace is a great product, and a lot of people love it, and I drink it myself a lot. <laughs> uh, but Eagle Rare is great in a different way. And uh, I think it's a little bit more refined for those people who, and that's what I find is the people who really enjoy bourbon enjoy both, but they enjoy this to sip on. Mm. Yeah, that's great. It was a, a good qu question from yes. Chris uh, Suron on Facebook. And basically you answered his question of other than time in a barrel, uh, what, is, what makes Eagle Rare different than Buffalo Trace? So, yeah, thank but you. But also it's, it's the blender that helps too. If, that's just a joke, by the way. No, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, shall we move on? Sure. Now we got a real treat because mm. this one is uh, made only once every year, and everybody complains they can't get it. <laughs> um, but trust me, we make a lot of it. It's just in such high demand. And this is our Eagle Wear. This is part of our antique collection. And I think it was two years ago that we actually move the proof from 90 to 101. And actually when we, this, this 101 proof is uh, what it was actually when Seagram first introduced it. So it went back to some of its roots. Yeah, it was an homage to the original proof of the brand. So, yes. uh, and we were, we were really pleased with the, that change. And I really think the, the bourbon connoisseurs out there, the whiskey connoisseurs really enjoy the higher proof because it really uh, accentuates the flavors more it pops in your mouth so we really hope that people like this now and uh, it's it's absolutely excellent so let's taste let's nose this and taste it I just wish it was Friday because I could drink more <laughs> you're right so this is this is almost mm -hmm. got a uh, uh, what do you want? The best way to describe it is very intense. It just keeps increasing intensity as we move through the line. It's almost got like a port or sherry nose. You see that complexity. So you got that integration of flavors now. It's even got tobacco notes. It's got that, that wine-like nose. And you might see some nuttiness now, maybe like walnut. But you see how it's Smells integrating, isn't it? Uh. It's rich. And then when we taste it, you're going to see the difference in taste from this one, from Eagle Rare, to this one. And I'll just let you taste it first. Oh, yes. That is, I'm sure everybody that's looking on must have a taste of this right now, right? Right. Is that a smell-o-vision camera? I no. wish it was. I I think, I think oh. you're describing it well. For and this is, the, uh, this is our last year's release, 2019 release, for any people that are following along at home. And actually, what you see now, instead of being like seeing some dark fruits, you see candied-like fruits. Agreed. And really, really uh, is bold in, 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 in every sense of the word. And the integration of the flavors is much nicer. So you start getting into that more molasses molasses syrupy type taste and then on the finish you get chocolate you get even some leather notes and so you can see the increase in complexity just aging seven more years in our warehouses and that's not an easy feat because as you get over 10 years it starts getting too too much wood so it's really an art 
to place the barrels in the correct locations mm. and pick the correct barrels. Otherwise, you can taste like the inside of a barrel. So we take a lot of pride and time to make sure that it's the best tasting product possible. Yeah, something that uh, jumps out at me when I taste the 17 versus the 10 is just that soft mouth feel. Uh, it's, it's oily. It's the fact that, you know, it, there's a jump in proof, but it just... It's it's very soft and round, um, coast to palate. It's really just a beautiful. It's beautiful. Whiskey. So even though Eagle Rare has that oil, oily, silky characteristic, it's accentuated more as you Absolutely. age up. So it really gives people uh, an up if you want to buy something special to drink, which mm -hmm. I know it's difficult to get, um, but keep trying because uh, we keep making more. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, in the 16 years I've been here, we've been making more all the time of all our products. Every single one of them, we put more away. Unfortunately, every year it's never enough. Right. And so that's why we're uh, expanding and we're building and investing over a billion dollars over the next 10 years to increase capacity just because everybody enjoys our products. Yeah, it's obviously, obviously one of the biggest questions we get. Is yes. Where can I get it? Is there going to be more? And, you know, with this big expansion, it sounds like there's plenty of bourbon coming. Yes. Um, and one question just right now, actually, from uh, Sean Cecil on Facebook. And Joshua, can, can we buy Eagle Rare at the distillery? You can. Our Eagle Rare 10-year-old is sold here at our visitor center at the distillery. Unfortunately, our, our 17 year and our double eagle very rare or 20 years not sold here. Um, they're a little more limited, but um, we have our eagle rare 10 year old here on a consistent basis. So come see us. Great. And just to, Tim, just to speak about the expansion, I mean, we're, we're building a new warehouse every three to four months, um, you know, over 58,000 barrels in each one of these. So we are cranking away. If you walk around here, it's a big construction zone. We've touched on it before, but you can hardly walk around here with all the construction going on in place. And so we're making more Eagle Rare, more of each and every of um, all of our expressions and all of our brands. So we're cranking away. Um, you know, I always say that there's no, there's just no microwave for this stuff. If we didn't put Eagle Rare 10 year old in a barrel 10 years ago, we don't have it today. Uh, and you can imagine uh, that's amplified when you start talking about 17 year old and 20 year old bourbons. And so it just takes time to catch up. And that's the magic of bourbon. You know, just think about this was put in a barrel and, um, you know, this was bought in 2019. It was put in a barrel in 2002. Think about what was, you know, how much the world has changed since then, right? And so it just gives you an idea of, of uh, how long this uh, great bourbon takes to make. Yeah, and actually we're on phase three of the uh, uh, expansion where we're actually putting in another still. So that's going to happen soon. So besides all the warehouses, we need an infrastructure. You need a bigger boiler. You need all that uh, pieces of equipment to, to actually produce it. So phase three is the, the still now, when, which is really exciting for us. Um, yeah, well, looks like we have one more. Well, like maybe you should show them the box. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. So the next one we have to share is our Double Eagle Very Rare. And this is something that we launched um, just a couple years ago. And it was something a little bit new for us. You know, um, this is um, obviously comes in this beautiful hand-blown crystal decanter. Um, had this hand-molded crystal eagle stopper. We have an eagle inside the bottle. If you guys want to see how this bottle is made, you can actually go to eagleware.com on our, on our brand website. And we have a video up there that shows how each one of these are made. So these are all made by hand. This is crystal. And it comes in this beautiful box as well. showcasing this beautiful box that's lit up from the bottom. Uh, each one comes with a certificate of authenticity. And so they're individually numbered, um, but obviously, you know, well packaged and, and really a showpiece. And, and at the end of the day, it's really all about the whiskey, but a whiskey this beautiful and this nice deserves to be packaged uh, equally as nice. And so that's why we spent over two years really developing this packaging and putting a lot of care into it. Um, because the fact of the matter is the whiskey in this bottle deserves it. And the first release was only uh, 299 bottles, right? 299 bottles for the entire world. Um, the second release wasn't much bigger. Yep. So, um, you know, these are, this is extremely rare. 
We call our double eagle very rare, but it's um, it's a 20 year old. And if you can't see on the camera, there's actually a, a glass eagle for the stopper, and there's one inside the bottom of the bottle. So it's actually really cool. You want to taste it? Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. And the reason uh, it's called Double Eagle Very Rare is because it's aged twice as long as Eagle Rare. Same recipe again, but 20 years. Should I pour a big pour? <coughs> well, yeah. oh, thank you, sir. So we do have a question, uh, sure. Drew. You're, yes. you're, you're sort of teasing us all with yes. uh, tasting and, and oh, all no. these, these amazing whiskeys. So uh, Dan, uh, looks like Ynet says, how do I learn to become a master blender? Well, the job's <laughs> taken, unfortunately. So uh, for, you can't, no, just. <laughs> Um, well, it's, it's like our taste panel. We actually have people from all over the plant that are actually part of our taste panel. We have tour guides, Josh, the distiller, myself, uh, lab techs. So we have people from all over the distillery come to the taste panel. And eventually, you taste long enough and you train long enough that you actually could become the master blender. So it's a really... A, uh, a time related, you just can't all of a sudden, oh, I want to be a master blender and just walk into the job. The good news is that, uh, well, maybe the good and bad, is that I'll be here a long time, so you don't have to worry <laughs> about it, I hope. And uh, we are training people currently uh, to do, uh, multiple people, to, to, be, to rise up to that challenge. Uh, because I, I won't be here forever, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I could because I would love to see more of these products being developed. Uh, but you have to taste every single day, unfortunately. And I know that's rough. And we start tasting in the morning, and we start at 6.30, and uh, we taste basically all day different products because here we uh, develop all our products for Sazerac, so we're just not tasting uh, these products, but many, many, many others. But there's no uh, technical school to go to other than you can go to university and take wine courses and stuff. They are developing bourbon courses here locally. Uh, so there will be some time in the future, but my experience has been over 40 years of just doing it. And I learned under a master at Seagram, who was a master blender, and so that apprenticeship type approach works too. But in the future, who knows where it's gonna come from. Yeah, a couple of things, um, as I was going through the training there um, to be on the tasting panel uh, that, that really amazed me was the fact that um, the rigorous training process that everyone goes through to be on that panel and then two that you know we all taste a little bit different and so that's why we don't have one person to approve um, you know everything that goes into one of these bottles that take we take a team approach like we do many things here at Buffalo right. Trace Distillery yep. you know, because some people pick up things that other people don't do it and there's nothing you can do about it. it's just the way we're built uh, and so uh, I love that team approach that we take yeah, so when people, when people, that's a good point, people say, well, you should smell this and taste that. Well, that's not the way it works. Everybody has unique palate and nose, and you taste different characteristics. So, like you say, some people are very sensitive to certain ones, and some aren't. So that's, it is a team approach. Ultimately, I have the responsibility, and that's what the Master Blender mm -hmm. does, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to sidetrack you. I know you have a 20-year whiskey right in front of you. So. Sure. That's all right. We, we're, we're happy to be sidetracked. So here's the, the best of the best. I mean, this is a fabulous whiskey that very few people, unfortunately, will taste. Mm. Oh, yeah. Do you, just the richness of the fruit and the descriptiveness is unbelievable on the nose. You're, you're right. I mean, so fruit forward. It, it, it's it, unbelievable. It's almost like you're smelling an, an Armagnac or something like that. But what's really surprising how balanced that is, is you're not overwhelmed by the oak characteristics. No. And so that is phenomenal. So the placement of these barrels is very, very critical to the quality of this product. Mm. So you're going to get... I get the tobacco, the leather. See how front forward the fruits, <clears throat> and you you start to. I think it's more of a uh, dark fruit. You get figs and dates and plums, and you do get the cherry notes. But you see how rich that is compared to how, as we progress. And I'm not cutting up these. 
It sounds like it, but this is just so fabulous, the double eagle, very rare. Mm. And taste is something that you want to taste over and over again. And it, the, the taste is just like the nose, very fruit forward, all those dark fruits, very prominent. And surprisingly, as it transitions, again, the oak doesn't dominate. It's mm -hmm. there, it transitions beautifully the back end. in the back end. Mm -hmm. But you do get that warming texture, that silky creaminess as you're tasting this. So it just keeps accentuating and the complexity is unbelievable. It's something that you can only taste once in a lifetime and it's something to, to be enjoyed. Or if you work here, maybe you can taste more often. <laughs> It, um, Does anybody want to taste? It lives up to it, for sure. So talk about, um, Drew, you know, mm, we've talked about extremely old bourbons here. You know, m most bourbons <coughs> never get close to 17, 20 years old. Yep. Talk about the, um, the care that goes into the aging process and where these might be aged on campus here uh, and, and uh, you know, how important that is in making these. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to age these anywhere really hot. And that's if you have a warehouse that's open, that's hot at the top, you do, do not want to put it up there because after 10 years, there's not going to be much left mm -hmm. for one thing. So mid to lower floors is where you want to age these types of products. And one thing that we've been trying here at Buffalo Trace is the, uh, our warehouse P, which is actually uh, in existence that we actually uh, keep the temperature from going too high. So we're really experimenting for the future. So see how long we can age uh, bourbon because a rye bourbon, you're getting 20 years is phenomenal. I mean, that just shows you the skill and the execution that we hear, have here at Buffalo Trace because not everybody can do that. And we really do watch it carefully because otherwise it would become an oak bomb, so to speak. Sure. Uh, I'll, you know, this is certainly aged gracefully. Yes, you know? it's Absolutely. very graceful. Yeah. That's a good term. I like that. Yeah. Well, um, we do cheers. Have a, yeah, sorry. We do have a question on, I believe it's Facebook, or no, it's YouTube, actually, from um, Shane Simon. You know, being a 17-year-old uh, bourbon, uh, can you talk about the evaporation and how many bottles would be left in such an old bourbon, like a 17-year? Yeah, well, you know, typically, uh, on average, it's going to depend on where we're at in the warehouses, but we lose 10% the first year and then 2 to 4% every year after that. So I do know on our 10-year that our barrels typically at 10 years are, you know, half empty or half full, depending if you're a pessimist, a pessimist or an optimist. Uh, so <laughs> so we've, lost, uh, we've lost half of it at, at 10 years. So that trend just continues as you get older. Yeah, you know, they, we lose it to the angel share, and I'd like to be an angel at some point here because that's what <laughs> I want to enjoy in the future. But anyways, uh, as an example, uh, Pappy Van Winkle, 23, there's less than 10 gallons in a barrel when it's finished, so 23 years later. So I'm sure this would be similar to that. So it's very limited uh, what's there. You Just think of it, the water's evaporating, and you're really concentrating the flavors. Mm. And that's why this is just explodes in your in your mouth, any of these actually. But as you increase, you get that explosion. It's much more intense. Mm. It's just like amplifying the flavor profile multitude of times. It's just a, a, it's a beautiful thing if you have the chance to taste it. So we're starting at 53 and, and working our way down to less than 10. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, it's phenomenal. So <laughs> there's not much left. No, that's why you have to, um, you know, pri really prize these types of bourbons. Um, well, that's why it's limited and rare. So we've talked about um, a, a, when you're when you're tasting a bourbon, uh, whether it's one of these or one of our single barrel offerings. When you taste it, Drew, what do you what are you really looking for to classify it as an exceptional bourbon versus a really good bourbon? On these particular ones, just just in general. Well, in general, um, it I always have to match it to the taste profile. So if we have a a target for these, that's what we're trying to determine. Now we have some leeway there uh, with some of the brands because every year it's like, a, like this one here, for instance, is done once a year. Mm -hmm. Every year it's slightly different. You can never make it exactly the same. So we, we, what actually I do on the antique collection is we actually have a, uh, samples from say the last 10 years 
And when we make this, uh, when we blend this, when we put these barrels together for this version of it, I want each one to be kind of vintage-like. So every year it's going to be slightly different because people appreciate that, especially people who enjoy this type of product. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 you, you can't put something together unless they're all great whiskeys because if you put anything that's bad, uh, it's not going to make it a great whiskey. So we just put that out of the equation. We won't use it. <clears throat> and sometimes when we do that, we have less to sell, which makes people upset. But uh, the taste is more important than anything we do here, so that's why we do it. Yeah, that's great. But it's amazing that um, I have the opportunity to work such great with such great whiskeys like the Antique Collection, and that being one of them, uh, because every year, and you know you taste it with me, uh, is a challenge, and we have to make the best every year. So I just hope everybody out there enjoys it, uh, those that get a chance to taste it. Yeah. We set a, a pretty high bar, yes, so we try yes. to live up to that. Yeah, so guys, we're, yeah. we're about out of time. I know you're both very busy um, here at the distillery, so if, if you have any closing remarks, um, let us know. Let, let the folks watching know. Um, One more question for you, Drew, before we get out of here. How, uh, for the people watching, how would you um, recommend them developing their palate? If they want to uh, just learn how to taste whiskey and call out these different notes that we've talked about, you're really... You're great at it. Um, how, how can people watching do that? Yeah, besides drinking a lot, um, <laughs> really the way uh, I train people is I, I talk to, to people about the recipe. Uh, first of all, you have to, if, if, what's the difference between a weeded bourbon and a rye bourbon? You have to distinguish that. So you start going up at, at a big high level and then you get to the in intricacies of each uh, whiskey like a rye bourbon. So when we train people, we have a training process where you just taste whiskeys. You just sensitize yourself to the differences between different single barrels, as an example. And then you progress eventually to, to actually become good at it, and you can pick differences. But the hardest thing is to know how different different is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the hardest thing for anybody to learn. Uh, but if you go start with the recipe and pick out the rye notes from the spiciness that's... Uh, causing it into, into the whiskey, the bourbon, and the sweetness from the corn. And you start developing, you start looking for those components. I think that's the way. And then you look at a variety of different products to see the differences. And you start learning and you start tasting. Because when I do a tasting with people, I talk about that, and we go through the different products, and right away they, the light clicks on in most people, is they can actually see differences. Mm. And then they start getting involved and they start joining clubs, bourbon clubs, and they learn a lot. And uh, there's lots of ways to do it like that. Great. Yeah, well, um, we appreciate everyone tuning in. You know, we, we, we love this brand, and we appreciate you guys tuning in and being fans of the brand. Uh, we promise that we'll continue to crank away, make more of this year and a year out, and continue to try to set the bar, especially on some of our, you know, our higher-end expressions here. So, Drew, thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Yeah, cheers.